Welcome to the Chop Man tutorial series. Based on the beloved classic arcade game Pac-Man, this project was created to be an easy to follow step-by-step -step guide that would give you the tools, techniques, and experience of creating a full game from start to finish. We have made all the original assets that we created for the game completely free. Links in the description below. For this project, if you wish to follow along step by step, you will need to first download the Chopman project files, both of which can be downloaded in the downloads area of the tutorial site or from links in the description. With our initial respawn created, let's move on to creating the spawn system for our ghosts once they get eaten. So to begin, we're gonna go back to our scene manager. Let's start by going into our level picker state and we're going to copy and paste our ghost spawn groups and nodes. Now let's go into our ghost respawn. To get started, we're going to paste our ghost spawn groups. And let's start by going over the logic that we want to create for this initial system. The logic we want to implement, we want the player to get 200 points multiplied by the amount of ghosts that they eat on one power pellet. For instance, if the player eats one ghost, they'll get 200 points but for the second ghost, they'll get 400 points. And for the third ghost, they'll get 800 points. And for the fourth ghost, they'll get 1600 points. That said, the easiest way to create this is to multiply 200 points by the variable amount of ghosts eaten. Since we'll be using the spawn system to also spawn our ghosts after the player has been killed, we need to start by checking our was player killed boolean. If the player is not killed, we then need to add one to our number of ghosts eaten. Next, we need to set the variable for the new number of ghosts eaten. From there, we need to multiply that number by the amount of points the players will get for eating a ghost. Since we created integer point variables for both of our dots and our power pellets, let's also create one for our ghost as well in case we want to change that point value later on. In order to set the new player's score, we need to add the amount of points the player has gotten by the current player's score. From there, we need to set the new player score value with the output of our addition node. Let's also group our nodes together to keep them better organized in our scene. Now that we've finished our ghost scoring and point system, let's move on to creating the logic for our ghost respawning system. We'll begin by setting our on enter state into a coroutine and then placing a wait for seconds node right after. This way we can ensure that all of our corresponding code has enough time to update our variables for our ghost respawn begins. Next, we'll place a null check to check the variables for the ghost responding. Since all of our ghost spawns are in one state, we need to assure that the ghost is spawning is the correct one. And if the ghost is eaten and destroyed, then the variable will be null. Our null check node is a node that checks and sees if our variable contains a value. So in this circumstance, it's going to check and see if our ghost red active object contains our instantiated ghost game object. Next, we'll use our instantiation code that we created and copied from our level picker state. And we'll use our null output and connect that with our game object instantiate node. With that complete, before we continue creating the respawn for the rest of our ghosts, let's test out our code. So we could see once we were powered up and we ate our ghost, and consumed our ghost, it did in fact respawn at the origin point. However, after the ghost respawned, it was still in its scarce state instead of in its normal state. 
So in order to fix this, we'll first need to create a new scene boolean variable, which we'll call is new power up. Next, we'll need to go into our ghost state machine in our ghost prefab, and we're going to go to our red ghost since we're using that ghost at the moment. And we need to go into our movement state. And in our movement state, we want to go into a transition from our chase to our scared state. And in our transition, we want to add a new branch node. And we want to say, if the is ghost 8 boolean is true for that ghost, then we don't want it to transition to our scared state. We only want it to transition if that is ghost 8 boolean is false. Next, we want to duplicate our update in our branch node, and we want to use that to check and see if our is new power boolean is true. This way, even if the ghost has been eaten and the player gets a new power up, it will still transition to a scare state. And we also want to add our custom event that we use to trigger our material before it triggers our transition into our scared state. We now need to go into our power pellet flow machine and add our is new pellet boolean into our graph. And we'll place a set variable node for our is new power up right after our is powered up node. And we'll place another one right before our game object destroy node. This way we can ensure that our boolean will be on long enough to trigger our transition, but won't be on long enough to affect a newly spawned ghost. Lastly, we'll need to toggle our isGhost8 boolean off. So we'll do that within our chop character, and we'll place that within the normal states of our player states. Before we create the states for the rest of our ghosts, let's test out our logic so far. Something to note is, if the ghost isn't changing to a scared state after getting the second power up, you can simply go back to your power pellet state and make the on trigger enter event into a coroutine and then place a wait for seconds node in between the nodes where it will set the boolean to false. This way, it'll give the state machine enough time to recognize that our variable has now changed and transitioned to the next state. With all of our respawn mechanics working, we can now go back into our state manager and create the states for the remainder of our ghost. Before we move on to adding the rest of our functionality in our remaining ghosts, we need to add a transition to our ghost respawn state. Since all the functionality in our ghost respawn state is, is set to an on enter state trigger, we'll need to assure that after the ghost respawns, it leaves our state. However, if we place a transition at the end of, of our ghost respawn nodes, we run the risk of one or more of our ghosts not respawning 
since some of our nodes weren't able to execute or transition to the next state in the middle of their execution. So the logic that we want to put in place for our transition is we don't want our transition to happen until we're sure that all of our ghosts have respawned into our scene. So in order to do this, we can use our node check to assure that our ghosts have spawned before moving on to the transition. So let's duplicate our on enter state as well as our wait command and we'll make the delay slightly longer than the delay for our ghost spawn. This way we can ensure that our spawn is able to execute before our transition happens. Next, we'll duplicate all of our null check nodes as well as each one of the variables that is checking. After all of our variables are checked, we'll then place a custom trigger event, which we'll call ghost respawn complete. Next, let's create a new flow state and we'll make a transition from our ghost respawn into our new flow state. And in our transition, we'll use our custom event ghost respawn complete. Let's also remove all our event nodes from our new flow state. And we're gonna rename this flow state into waiting. With our respawn complete, let's add the is new powered up node as well as the ghost eight node to our other ghost movement transition states. Let's now go back into our stage manager to test out our functionality so far. With our ghost respawn system complete, let's now move on to creating our player respawn system. Let's start by copying our player respawn mechanic that we created in our level picker state. And we're gonna paste them in our player respawn state. So in our player respawn state, we don't simply want our player respawn, we also want our ghosts to be reset in their pins. Before the player respawns, let's first destroy all of our active ghosts so we'll use a destroy game object node to destroy all of our active ghosts that are in our scene and use our ghost response state to place them back in their original spawn position. Once our game objects are destroyed, let's also have a brief pause before the, both the player and the ghost are respawned in our scene.
and let's also create a custom event to trigger our transition to our ghost respawn state. And let's now create a transition from our player respawn to our ghost respawn. And we'll use our custom event as our transition trigger. We'll also need to go into our game manager and we'll create a new state. And in this state, we're simply gonna place a set variable node to turn off our player was killed Boolean. And let's now place a custom trigger in our player respawn as well as our game over to trigger our transition. With that complete, let's now test out our player respawn mechanic. Before we begin, we first need to go into our application variables and let's, and let's set our player lives left to one. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to see this and many other tutorials, game development tips, interviews, and free game asset giveaways.